is multi-talented. She's a brilliant lawyer. She's an Emmy-winning co-host of The View. And she's a New York Times best-selling author. Her new novel is called Summer on Sag Harbor. Please welcome my friend, Sunny Hostess! <laughs> to see you. You too. You know, it's so funny because we're literally part of a TV sorority. We and are. and how much do you love the View sisterhood? I love it. It yes. means so much to me and you mean so much to me. I don't even know if you remember this, but when I signed my deal sheet, um, you gave me a call. I don't know yes. how you got my number, but you gave me a call. <laughs> Girl, I could stalk somebody if I want you to. You really did. And you were like, I heard you coming on the show. And I was like, yeah, I'm joining the show. She was like, did, did they uh, give you car stipend? I was like, no. <laughs> did they give you this? I was like, no. I was like, let me get my deal sheet out. And you basically went over your salary for the entire time you were there. And you also gave me Jenny McCarthy's salary. Yes, I did. She got me I paid. gave everybody's salary. You gave me everyone's salary, and I went back to my agent. I was like, you did not get me enough money. There you go! <laughs> because I got it from Rosie. Rosie O'Donnell gave me everybody's salary and hers, and I fit, you gotta pay it forward. It because... was very helpful, Sherry. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You gotta stick together. That's right. Okay? Well, you know, and this, speaking of sticking together, yeah. you have a group of girlfriends. I've never heard this term <laughs> for a group of girlfriends, but you call yourselves the machetes. Yes. Okay? Yes. The machete. Look at this, and you, all the ladies here. <laughs> oh, now, where did yes. you get the name machete? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna tell this story, but um, <laughs> my grandmother, who's from Puerto Rico, used to keep a machete right. above her couch. Okay. I have that machete in my house as well. <laughs> and there was a, an affair that happened in our family. Yeah. And my grandmother took the machete off and went to the person's house and was brought me along. <laughs> I don't know why I was there. And was waving it around and yeah. basically said to the person, don't show up around my, uh -huh. you know, family right. anymore. Anymore. And, and the person did not. Okay. <laughs> and so it's for. So I had told my, my friends this story and they were like, we are the machetes because we will take a machete out on somebody. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I'm... they're amazing. I mean, it's Angela Rye, Jamel Hill, Latasha Brown, Tiffany Cross. Wow. Uh, Brittany Pagnett Cunningham, Erin Haynes, Alicia Garza who founded Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. um, Joy Reid and then, you know, statuesque, Carrie Champion. I never stand next to Carrie. Oh my she's goodness. She's six feet tall and she makes me look short. It's not even about the tall. It's all of the successful, beautiful melanin queens yeah. in this picture. They're amazing. Girl, and look at y'all. <laughs> what? Okay, I They're wanna amazing. know, how did the machetes <laughs> first get together? You know, it was Angela Rye. She, yeah. um, we were friends with her but we weren't friends with each other. Okay. And she said, we need Biden to choose a black woman as his vice presidential candidate. Okay. And she called me and I was like, what do you want to do about it? And she was like, let's write an op-ed in the mm. Washington Post and tell Biden what he needs to do. Yeah. Because black women are the very backbone of the Democratic Party, because we come out and we vote, we get our husbands to vote, we get our children Absolutely. to vote. And we wrote an op-ed together that went viral. I remember that. We even got a call from the president, uh -huh. <laughs> the now president. He wasn't the president then. And he listened to us. And I don't think we're solely responsible for Vice President Kamala Harris, but I think we had a little hand in it. All right. Yeah. He did, and he called and did he, did he say thank you? He didn't really say thank you, uh -huh. but he wanted our thoughts. Yeah. And I appreciated that. It's nothing like a bunch of black women and they next start moving. <laughs> Their neck starts moving. We, we did, we did a video that accompanied the op-ed. And all of y'all had your necks moving because you know you meant business. We need a female vice president that is a black woman. That's what I'm talking about. We did a lot of that. We did. And I know this, I love this because uh, you attended the White House Correspondents' Center. I did. I love going to that. I did, love how it. How much fun did you have? <laughs> Look at you. How much 
much fun was this? I had a good time. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the drinks are flowing, <laughs> the food is flowing. <laughs> Everybody's, it's the nerd prom. You know, right. we, talk, we talk about journalism, but it's about who you're sitting next to and who's in the room. John Legend walked in, I was like, Donna Brazil was at my table. She was like, I'm about to stalk John Legend. Do you think it's okay? I said, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's fun. It's oh my fun. gosh, because John showed a picture of you and he at the White House. Yes, we were, we were together. Yeah, you say liquor flow we and John is right there, yeah, boy. Y'all oh. <laughs> We were at the after, par after, after party together. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, we would, yeah. Was the president there? Was the vice president there? Vice president wasn't there, but Diana Ross was there. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's why when you get an invitation to go, you go. You go, you I don't turn it I down. RSVP very quickly. Right, and you were there. I RSVP before the rest of my co-hosts. Oh, like, and you were one of the first ones there? I was one of the first people there. Okay, I could tell, because you looked like you was ready to party I and get lit. I was ready. <laughs> I want to tell you, every, you have got to stand up and do a turnaround because you look absolutely amazing. Okay. Look at you. Look at this girl. <laughs> look at you. Thank you. I, the one thing I love about you, Sunny, is you're always so open and yeah. you're very, very transparent. And yeah. you've been very transparent about your plastic surgery. Yeah. And I mean, you know, a lot of people are not. So why did you decide to make it public? You know, I was walking around with G boobs. Yeah, you, your G boobs was big. They were big, you yeah, know that. They you, were sitting you, on the table, you, I know. Them. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and my waist wasn't snatched anymore. Yeah. My son turned 20, and I was like, I'm getting my body back that this little boy took from me. Yes. I mean, you know, he was a very big baby. He's six foot two now. Yeah. And my body was never the same, and I just felt so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to speak out because I had, I had terrible back pain, yeah. and I was wearing, you know, a minimizer plus a sports bra. I yeah. was doing all these things to hide it. I could never wear something like this because it would always open I'll up. Always open up. And I, I just thought, why don't I share this with other people to give them, in a sense, permission to make themselves feel better? Like, right. it's, it's about, and it's not a choice for everyone, right. you know, but it was a choice for me, and I didn't want to hide that, and I didn't want to, I felt no shame about yeah. it. I feel good, you know? I don't feel any shame. There you go. Yeah. I, just... I love, because I like how you, you know, because me and you, we was always like, we always lean over yeah, like this. Yeah, you lean on the, the table, because, you know, you got okay. this one, and I, I would do a lot of this. Yeah, see, now, I'm know. the only one doing it. You're not doing it no more. No, I'm not doing it anymore. Here. I was like, I want them perky again. Oh, well, they are very, very, they are smiling at me. Aren't they? I love it, girl. Yeah. So, I also want to congratulate, this I'm very, very excited about. I want to congratulate you on your new novel, and it's called Summer on Sag Harbor. Thank you. You gotta tell us about this. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a, a trilogy that I'm writing. Okay. And um, this is the second book in the trilogy. The first book was Summer on the Bluffs. And I, this, the first book came out during the pandemic, actually. Yeah. And so I didn't have a traditional book tour. So I met with a lot of uh, book clubs on, okay. online. And the women were like, kept telling me, what happened to Olivia? Yeah. Olivia got messed up in that first book. What you gonna do about Olivia? And I, I just listened to them. And okay. so this, this takes place in Sag Harbor, yes. a traditionally um, and historically African-American beach community. Mm -hmm. And it's Olivia's story. It's about women who deserve certain things yeah. and they need to ask for them and they need to grasp it. Right. And we deserve kindness, we deserve to be valued, we deserve to be um, appreciated and protected, we deserve love, yes. you know, yeah. we, we deserve a little Sex? Okay, is this, well, this one, I'm just about to ask, on what page is the good sex on? Where do I go it's, for the, because when I'm asking for the good sex, it's, what page? It's, it's, it's throughout, Joy Behar was like, this has more sex than the last book. I Ooh, was like, that's what I, well, then I'm buying one. I think I'm gonna buy a whole book. I like this. Now, you, I love this because you partnered with Octavia Spencer to turn the books into TV series. Yes! I know. It was, it was really incredible. I actually gave Octavia Spencer yes. a manuscript. It wasn't even the book yet. Okay. And I just, I don't know why I gave it to her. I was like, please read, it's my first book coming out. I thought she would maybe do an Instagram post for me. Right. And then she calls me like two days later. She's like, I read your book on the flight. I read your book. And let me tell you why I need to be your production partner. Wow. And I was like, what? I, I, the book wasn't even out yet. Okay. So I was basically like, I don't think it's going to be made into anything. She was like, oh, no, people are going to call you. It's going to be made into something. And let me tell you why. So when an Academy Award winning actress tells you that, you, you start to believe it. Yes. And sure enough, it's, I can't tell you which streaming service, but we're going to be 
streaming Summer on the Bluffs, and Octavia's gonna be in it. Oh, I love <laughs> it! <laughs> Do you see what happens when the queens get together? Can I play a role while I'm having sex yes. in your movie? Yes, you can. Okay, just, I don't even care yes. what character yes, you give you can. me, as long as, okay, just give me some... Y'all heard her say it. All right, that's it. I'm telling you, you know what, Sonny, you know how much I love you, and how much you mean to me, and I'm so glad that you were here. Mm -hmm.